Hi. Hello, fellow cyborgs, and welcome to a book haul. Kitty is probably going to be in here a little bit. Let's just hope she doesn't touch the microphone. And now that's the thing you can't touch. No, thank you. I recently celebrated my 30th birthday and I was gifted a number of books by family and friends, but I've also been doing a lot of book shopping for myself as well. I will be hauling a total of 19 things today, though only 17 are going on my physical TBR, but 17 are going on my physical TBR. So let's start with the books that were gifted to me. One of my friends sent me these two books. So we have A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry, which is one of the most famous plays that I could find that was written by a black author. I've had this on my Goodreads TBR for years, so I've been meaning to read it. And then she also sent Full Cicada Moon by Marilyn Hilton. This is a young adult or it might be middle grade. I think our protagonist is 11. Novel written in verse about a young girl in the 1960s who is half Asian and half black and who wants to be an astronaut even though she's not encouraged to pursue the sciences. Again, this has been on my TBR for a long time and I've in fact actually forgot about it, but then my friend fortunately gave it to me. Both of these are relatively short, especially since this is in verse and I'm hoping to enjoy both of them immensely. Acacia over at the Chaotic Little Book Corner also sent me these two books. I recently mentioned in a video that I wanted to upgrade my edition of The Night Circus and this was definitely an upgrade. I really enjoy this cover a lot more. It's a vintage red spine but it's also a kind of petite paperback and it's very floppy. So next time I read The Night Circus I will be probably reading this physical copy instead of reading the audiobook because this copy is so pretty. She also sent me The Twelve Birds of Christmas by Stephen Moss. I previously read The Robin, a biography by Stephen Moss. So this is a bird book. It's a nature nonfiction. And this one has to do with the 12 birds that are referenced in the 12 Days of Christmas Carol. However, I don't think that every single one of the days has a bird, so also other Christmas iconic birds. I'm really looking forward to a brand new Christmas read and to especially read some more nature nonfiction. My parents gifted me three books for my birthday. The Complete Poems of Ray Bradbury was a complete surprise. I've had my eye on this for a while once I realized that Bradbury wrote poetry, so I'm really excited to have this copy in my hands. And then we have the final two books in the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. I read The Bear and the Nightingale earlier this year for Springathon, and so we have The Girl in the Tower and The Winter of the Witch. I will hopefully be buddy reading this with M.A. Anders throughout the remainder of the year, so hopefully these won't stay on my TBR for too long. She's back! I've also bought a big stack of books by Black authors in my hopes to read more Black authors. I'm really excited for a lot of these, and a lot of these have been on my Goodreads TBR probably since 2016, but I just hadn't picked them up. First off, though, I want to un-unhaul a book. I recently in an unhaul video said I was unhauling Another Country by James Baldwin, but I recently saw Diana of Color talk about this in her black booktuber tag video. And I realized that I probably would like to reread this in the future, especially since I just reread another book by a black author that I rated okay the first time, but then got a lot more out of it the second read. So I decided that this might happen with Baldwin and I should keep this on my shelves. So I am rehauling this gladly. I splurged a little bit and bought a couple books from the UK to get beautiful editions, but then I also bought a bunch of books used from Powell's. The two from the UK are The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison and the these beautiful new editions that I learned about from Mercedes channel, Mercy's Focus Musings. These are the new vintage editions and they are lovely and also matte to the touch. I love it. Also very floppy. This is Toni Morrison's first novel, the main character Piccola, I think. Piccola has always wanted blue eyes even though she is black and has brown eyes and I know that there are trigger warnings for sexual assault in here, but I've also heard this highly recommended. So I'll work myself up to stomaching it. I will be buddy reading this with the friend who bought me A Raisin in the Sun and Full Cicada Moon later this year and I wanted to be prepared and it's been out of stock everywhere in the US so I'm happy to have my hands on this. And then she also recently recommended Small Island by Andrea Levy to me. She had recently read it and loved it and when I saw that the UK edition was heads and tails better than the US edition I decided to go ahead and splurge for this one as well. It's a bit more of a chunker but most of the books that I recently picked up are not long so it's actually I think going to be refreshing to have a book that I can sink my teeth into for longer. This is a historical fiction that centers around Jamaican immigrants and then their white landlord. In a recent video Hannah from Hannah's Books 
recommended Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. This is one of the few existing slave narratives written by a woman, and Harriet Jacobs was sexually harassed by her master and then eventually ran away and lived within the walls of a neighboring house for seven years to stay hidden. One of my friends also read this in college and said it was really good, which makes me really excited to read it. I also lucked into this really adorable little mini paperback edition. This is the Schomburg Library of 19th Century Black Women Writers collection, which is published by Oxford University Press, so it's adorable. The content probably won't be adorable, but this actual book is adorable. I've been binging Helene's videos, she's from the channel Books by Lanes, on her Black writers, and Gloria Naylor is her favorite author of all time, if I remember correctly, or one of her favorite authors. I know Oscar Wilde is also her bae. And in it, she recommended Gloria Naylor's works. The Women of Brewster Place has been on my Goodreads TBR for years, and so I finally decided to pick it up, even though I know that this does have a pretty graphic scene in there. And I looked into this absolutely glorious copy. I was expecting a like photographic cover but this one is just like weird and I love it so much. So I'm not gonna lie, the beautiful packaging makes me even more eager to pick this up. I don't remember from whom I learned about The Wedding by Dorothy West, maybe Dee Dee from Brown Girl Reading. This is set in the 1950s and takes place in the East Coast's Black Bourgeoisie. This centers on the Cole family and one of their daughters, Shelby. She has recently become engaged to a white jazz musician who lives in New York City. And this explores the ramifications of that, the race relations and also the class relations as well. Another small one, I'm looking forward to exploring this. This is Happiness Like Water by Chinelo Okparanta and she is a Nigerian author and this is a collection of short stories. This is one of the more higher rated short story collections that I had on my Goodreads TBR and I also found it for cheap on Powell's, which is partly why I picked this up. From what I can tell, I believe these are realist short stories and more slice of life about Nigerian women. I'm looking forward to seeing what I can find in here. This is Foreign Soil by Maxime Beniba Clark, and she is a Australian author. This too is a collection of short stories, mostly I believe about immigration, and it comes highly recommended. Specifically, I remember Mercedes talking about it. It's been on my radar for ages, and even though I don't love glossy covers, I really love this cover. I will be buddy reading this soon with Acacia from the chaotic little book corner. Crick Crack by Edwidge Dondicott is also a collection of short stories, but this time from the Haitian perspective. I heard about this, I'm fairly certain, from Dee Dee from Brown Girl Reading years ago. I tried it out from the library, but it didn't grab me immediately, but I haven't really forgotten about it since. Comfy Cozy Up also recently read this for the Caribathon, which took place in June, and she really enjoyed it and said that it was actually interconnected short stories, which makes me even more excited to read this. This is Some Soul to Keep by J. California Cooper. I've heard about J. California California Cooper and her books are just so incredibly beloved on Goodreads. This is a collection of short stories, but this is a collection of I think four longer short stories, which is not normal for Cooper, and it's actually five. I wanted to read something by Cooper and really couldn't decide, and this was one of the cheaper ones, so I decided to pick it up. I'm really hoping that I will love Cooper's writing style and get to explore more of her works. This is Where the Line Bleeds by Jesmyn Ward, which was her first novel. This centers around two twins, Christoph and Joshua, who have recently graduated from high school and they both have to decide what their futures will hold. I am nearly finished with reading this. Actually, I'm buddy reading it with a friend and I'm enjoying it so much. I picked this up because my friend had it on her shelves and I wanted some guidance of what books to choose and I decided I would buddy read this with her. And oh boy, am I glad I did. I'll tell you more about this in one of my wrap ups. And finally, we have what I think is a modern classic, Sugar by Bernice L. McFadden. I will be buddy reading this with Sarai from Sarai Talks Books and we'll be starting it any day now. Sugar, who is a sex worker, moves into a small Arkansas town, and the town definitely has opinions about this. If I remember correctly, she befriends a woman named Pearl, and their relationship is at the heart of the story. This will be the second McFadden that I have read, and I'm hoping that I will enjoy this immensely. So those are the books that I've recently added to my physical TBR, which is now at 38 books, which is the highest it's been in a while. But fortunately for me, that just means that I don't have to rely on my library to get new books to me. Please let me know in the comments down below of course, if you have any opinions on the books that I've recently hauled, and if there are any that you specifically want to see me read sooner rather than later. Though, of course, my plan is to have all of these read by the end of the year. Thank, thank, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, support Black writers and continue to be lovely. What are you doing? You having fun? She's busy. With those 17 additions to my physical TBR, my physical TBR is currently... Me, my.